welcome back to the channel. Got a little something on the bench for you here. So we have some 1206 LEDs. Made a custom wire harness for two LEDs powered by the flight controller. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to do that. We're going to go through the math to make sure it's right and kind of show you a little bit of the process of making your own harness um, and some of the pieces and parts that I use. So if you're interested in lighting up, uh, putting some tail lights on your little whoop, you know, stay tuned. That's what this video is about. we got everything set up uh, got all the pieces and parts laid out so I, it's really really difficult to show you how intense these lights are like you don't even want to look at them because they're so bright with all the uh, filming lighting and all the stuff turned off these two lights illuminate my whole work area I mean not proficient enough to do a lot of work but it's 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 pretty bright uh, so it just doesn't give it justice showing it on film with all the exterior lighting here for filming um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in here and I just want to show you how how I fit this all in here and how, you know, just making your own custom harness and using these tiny little LEDs is, is really neat. Um, there is some things that you need to know uh, to make this work. Otherwise, you're just going to burn your LEDs out. So I have two LEDs. I have two resistors in here. Um, I'll zoom in and show you that. We'll go through the LEDs, the wire, the resistors. I'll show you the back of the LEDs so you can understand the polarity. And then I'll get some paper and a calculator and we'll go through all that stuff real quick. Let me go ahead and zoom in on this for you. Alright, so we're zoomed in. Got the light up for you. Uh, so you can see the LED is right here. That's how, I mean, just absolutely tiny little LED chip. But they're so bright. And then I have my wire going around here. So this wire is twisted nice and tight. Now I put a little bit of hot glue behind the LED and then I kind of just smushed hot glue across the front here. I found that hot glue is sticky enough to stick to the frame after you use 91% alcohol to kind of get rid of any residue. And you put the hot glue on there, it's very flexible and sticky. So every crash you take, it can handle the impact without popping loose the adhesion. I've used other adhesives and when you really crash, I'm, I'm like really good at crashing. Um, so I want to make sure that this doesn't delaminate uh, behind the adhesive. Uh, so far, the hot glue's worked out on other things that I've done. So that's why I went with hot glue. Um, and then also inside here, I have my two resistors. I'll zoom in a little bit more on that. So I kind of show you how that looks in there. Um, but it comes through the bottom here. And there's two resistors behind this bar. Um, I've epoxied these two resistors after soldering the uh, hot line, the 5 volt line. The ground just runs across. So the ground goes from the ground on the flight controller and goes all the way to the LED with no break. The 5 volt from the flight controller goes to the resistor, through the resistor, and then to the LED. And then I have the resistor for this side flipped. So the 5 volts goes to... The resistor over here goes through the resistor and then over to here. Like I said, I'll, I'll kind of draw some things out so I can explain that a little more. Uh, I'll zoom in real quick here so you can kind of see what it looks like. It's just a real nice, tidy package. And, you know, I guess that's a benefit of custom made, you know, custom making your own stuff. Let me zoom in here for you. All right. So I, what I've done is I've taken these two resistors and I've, um, uh, stacked them on top of each other and then I have epoxy resin the whole thing uh, so that way I didn't have to use heat shrink and be all bulky um, and then the resin will keep these exposed um, solder joints um, from being shorted out basically and then I just use some hot glue to attach the resistors to the frame so as you can see that's a pretty tight little tight little package So I have two 5 volt and then two ground. And both 5 volt go here to the 5 volt pad along with my camera. And then the ground and the two grounds. So the ground for the camera and the two grounds from the LEDs. That's basically the wiring. And close up view. So let me go ahead and zoom out. 
All right, so this one's all finished, uh, wrapped up. I'm gonna uh, build a new harness for this uh, quadcopter. Got my all my stuff ready to go to put that together. So I'll set this off to the side. Be ready to ri rip him around as soon as I can. Uh, so the first thing is the LEDs and then the wire and then the resistors. And then I'll show you the actual components themselves. I'll zoom way in so you can see the marking on the LEDs for polarity. And then we'll go to paper and make all that you know, makes sense. Uh, so let me go ahead and show you these. All right, so the first up is pink. Um, now keep in mind with these, the different colors have a different voltage. Okay, so there's going to be different levels of uh, voltages. We're going to go kind of, when we go to the paper and do the math, we're going to kind of round things out. Okay, um, but basically we're looking at pink being 3 volt to 3.2 volt with 20 milliamp. So this is rated up to 20 milliamp. If you feed 20 milliamp or 0 0.02 amps to this LED, it will burn its brightest without burning out. If you exceed that, then you'll burn the LED. The LED, if you think about it, it's it's just an it's a continuous load. It it will take all that you give it. So if you apply like if you just try to solder a wire to this LED and connect it to your flight controller, you're going to burn the LED because it's just going to take anything that you give it. That's why you have to put a resistor on it. So we'll get into the math here a little bit with that. Um, now green is, is pretty much identical to purple. So it's the same statistics, 3, 3.2 volt range and then 20 milliamp. And then the wire that I use is 30 gauge. Now this is red. I actually have green as well. I, I like to use two different colors. Uh, you want to call this, you can call this motor wire. You can call this varnished wire. You can call this, um, you know, whatever you want. Uh, but a lot of times it's called motor wire or magnet wire. So I have red here and there, here's the information on the box in case you want to look it up. And I have red and green for polarity, so this will be 5 volt, and then the green will obviously will be ground. The uh, resistors, now the, here's the, kind of, that's kind of the kicker for the whole thing is how, how do you know what, you know what resistor to use? And we'll get into the math, but that's the way they look when they come out. So they have all of that. This is a 20, 120 ohm resistor. Uh, the statistics on this require 120 ohms. So I have 120 ohm with a tolerance of 1%, which is a pretty high quality, nice resistor. And it's a quarter watt. So that's, that's kind of where we're at with the, if you take the voltage and the amperage and multiply it, then you kind of get your watts. So I know that I'm about a quarter watt when I multiply my voltage and my amps. Uh, so this will work out good. And then my wire, um, I'll try to, let me see if I can use a green one. So you can see that I just took a little uh, insulation off with the um, side cuts. And basically to do that, I just took my side cuts and pinched onto it without cutting it and then slid it off and then rotated round and round, slid that off. Uh, you can also lay it on the bench and kind of just scrape that uh, lacquer off of there. And if you know a really easy way to do that, you know, let me know in comments. But the, just using my side cuts is the best thing. And I'll show you a little bit of uh, stuff as far as soldering goes. Kind of some tricks here. Uh, so here's my resistor after I cut the legs off. Let me zoom in a little bit better here. All right, so my resistor. Um, I'm not going to get into color coding. So all these bands are color coded. Uh, somewhat aggravating that they use a blue... Um, blue paint on this metal barrel but you can see how I've cut it and I've taken jeweler's pliers and I've made me a little round in and that's just something to hold the solder so I just put a little dab of solder kind of like a flight controller pad basically sorry that was out of focus there for a little while didn't it? now the hard part is trying to show you this there we go alright so you can see both of them are now pointing to this direction so you're going to have your voltage, your supply voltage, whether that be 5 or 9 or 10 or 12, 
doesn't matter to me. Whatever your supply voltage is, in my case, it's five volts. You're gonna have your supply through the LED and then you'll uh, go to ground. Okay, so this will be the ground. This will be the five volts. In between the five volt supply and the LED is gonna be a resistor. So we'll have a resistor for each one. And you can put that resistor wherever you want. I just happen to put it behind that bar on my frame. So let me go ahead and get some paper and a pencil and we will kind of go through some math. Let me zoom out of here real quick. All right, so we got our trusty paper and our calculator. Uh, so we're gonna do a little bit of math. Now, here's the thing. They don't make specific pieces and parts for exactly the math, okay? And then we wanna look at some variables. So our supply voltage, if we have a voltage spike, what would be like the max supply voltage spike? Um, in our case, we're using a five volt back from the flight controller. Um, so this is a little whoop board has five volt out. So that's five volt, but there's a chance that there might be a little spike. Um, we want to, we want to safeguard ourselves with our resistor. So let's say 5.2 volts. That would be like the max in my mind. And then the requirement, so that's the supply voltage coming from the quadcopter. And then the requirement on the LED is three, 3.2 volts. Um, now let's say that the three volts uh, drops down. Okay, let's say we have uh, a little bit of voltage drop through our system. Um, so let's go ahead and say instead of three volts, let's go with 2.9 roughly. So this is the supply and this is our LED requirement because it says right there three volts. So let's subtract the two so we can have a difference between these. Okay. 5.2 subtract by 2.9 equals 2.3. So we have 2.3 volts is the difference between our supply and the requirement of the LED. Now, mind you, we're kind of we're kind of giving ourselves some leeway here. Um, so we'll take the 2.3 and we're going to divide that by the requirement of 20 milliamp. Okay. So as you know, we have. Uh, you know, 0 0.02 amps, okay, because 0 0.02 amps is 20 milliamps. So now let's go ahead and take our 2.3 and divide that by 0 0.02 equals, and we have 115 ohms. All right, so here's the thing. This is anything that you want to do, okay? Let's say you're wanting to use a 9-volt BEC or the 10-volt BEC from your, you know, ESC or you got a wing or you got a remote control truck, any of that type of thing. Your voltages are different, okay? The only thing you're doing here is you're taking your supply voltage, whatever that number may be, and you're subtracting it by the required voltage of your LED, and you might want to give yourself like a 1% or a couple percent variation. So I got 2.9. Um, and then whatever that equals, that difference between the two, whatever that number is, is going to be divided by the required milliamp. And, and all LEDs are going to have the required milliamp. In this case, it's 20 milliamp. I hope that makes sense. I don't want to go into like the whole Ohm's law and all, all the other things that make make this stuff come up uh, but 115 ohms you're not going to go on amazon and buy 115 ohm resistor uh, so 120 ohm is kind of the best case scenario i wouldn't go down uh, anytime you're dealing with the ohms you want to go up you know round yourself up the the led might not be as bright but it's not going to burn out or burn out as fast okay um, so that's kind of how we know uh, we want 120 ohm uh, resistor to be in line with our LED. I'd like to zoom in here and just kind of show, I don't really think in this video I need to go and like solder everything up. I've already shown you what it looks like finished, um, but I wanted to give you how how to get here and what pieces and parts I used.
so that's it. Um, if I miss something, I apologize. Um, you know, in comments, please let me know uh, maybe some of your experiences or things that you found or uh, any, anything in this video that didn't make any sense. Let me know. Um, I'm always open, uh, you know, I always like to learn too. So hopefully this helped you out. And if it did, you know, I appreciate it. Give me a, a thumbs up and subscribe. <laughs> Man, if you hated it, you give it a thumbs down. It all works. Enjoy the breeze. Thank you.